Hollywood, California, Monday, April 12th. <laughs> the Lux Radio Theater presents Walter Houston, Nan Sunderland, and Faye Bainter in Dodsworth. <laughs> Lux presents Hollywood. Our stars, Walter Houston, Nan Sunderland, Faye Bainter, Gregory Gay, and John Carradine. Our guests, Sidney Howard, distinguished playwright, Pulitzer Prize winner, and adapter of Dodsworth, and Walter Plunkett, one of Hollywood's best-known costume designers. Our producer, Cecil B. DeMille. Our conductor, Louis Silvers. From our stage on Hollywood Boulevard, our stars, our guests, and our staff join me in a coast-to-coast greeting. As once again, it's my privilege to say, welcome, everyone, to the Lux Radio Theater. This program is brought to you by the makers of Lux Flakes, those tissue-thin diamonds of soap that women everywhere use for their nice things. You undoubtedly have a box of Lux in the house right now, like other Lux Radio Theater listeners. But have you a package out in the kitchen, near the sink where you do the dishes? Lux has no harmful alkali, as harsh kitchen soaps often have, to parch and roughen the hands. Just a spoonful does the trick, and it leaves hands smooth and white so they are as pretty a setting for your rings as the day you were married. So tomorrow, and every day after, reach for the familiar blue box of Lux Flakes as you start the dishes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. (laughs) Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Disregarding traditions has been the secret of many a man's success. Hannibal astounded and crushed his enemies by converting elephants from draft animals to war machines. Louis Pasteur by taking the virus of rabies and turning it into a cure for rabies. Benjamin Franklin faced the lightning, terror of all mankind before him, and with a key and a kite, introduced us to the wonders of electricity. There are those who dare in words as well as deeds, and tonight's play provides the perfect example. The unwritten law of the theater says that best-selling novels do not always make successful plays. Sidney Howard wrote one of the exceptions to that, that proves the rule when he adapted Sinclair Lewis' novel, Dodsworth, for the stage. A dramatic triumph for three years, it was sold to pictures for the record-breaking sum of $160,000. Walter Houston broke the theatrical legend that actors never stop acting when he stopped acting to become a city engineer. He brought power and light to St. Louis until he was sure that he could bring power and light to the theater, which he'd left as an unknown. He returned to become a great star. As we greet Walter tonight, we also welcome the two other stars with whom he shared his Broadway ovations. His wife, Nan Sunderland, resuming her role of Edith Cortright, and Miss Faye Bainter, who journeyed from New York to be with us as Fran. From the screen version, we have Gregory Gay as Kurt, while John Carradine, a discovery of mine, will be heard as Arnold Israel. Curtain time. Louis Silver's raised baton. The old familiar words, the Lux Radio Theater presents. And tonight we give you Dodsworth with Walter Houston, Nan Sunderland, Faye Bainter, Gregory Gay, and John Carradine. Our scene is the comfortably furnished library of the Dodsworth home in Zenith. It's late afternoon, and Fran Dodsworth, smartly dressed for traveling, sits beside the fire, checking over a list of things to be done before her departure. Mary, the maid, listens attentively. Let me see now, Mary. Wasn't there something else? Oh, yes, the book's on the table. My husband's taking them along. See if you can't slip them in his big leather suitcase. Yes, Mrs. Dodsworth. And send all the old magazines to the Salvation Army. Yes, Mrs. Dodsworth. And when my daughter and Mr. McKee get back from their honeymoon, I put all the wedding presents that came after they left in the closet in Miss Emily's old room. I'll tell her, ma'am. Oh, Sam, how are you, dear? That's all, Mary. Yes, Mrs. Dodsworth. Well, is everything settled? It's all over. 
The Revelations Motor Company, Samuel Dodsworth, president and founder, became the property of United Motors a little over an hour ago. How do you feel? Well, how would any man feel who just sold 25 years of his life? I suppose you feel sort of lost. Well, I knew what I was doing when I sold, Fran, and I know what I'm after from now on. But you mustn't feel lost, though. I mean, that feeling will wear off. Life isn't going to be empty from now on. It's going to be fuller than ever and richer for both of us, Sam. Think, darling, you're free. After 20 years of doing what was expected of us, we are free. Yes, I suppose so. Well, don't look so mournful about it, darling. It's all so exciting to me. But I'm just as keen on this trip as you are, Fran. I'm raring to go. I've always wanted to see London and Paris. Oh, but I want much more than a trip out of this, Sam. I want a new life all over from the very beginning. A perfectly glorious, free, adventurous well, life. What's to prevent? Nothing if we start out on a free foot. Why, I'd almost be willing to sell this house so we'd have nothing to bind us here. My good Lord, Fran, it's our home. We built ourselves into it. What I want is to get us some new selves now. Me? Yes, you. Why, if you weren't tied to this deadly, middle-class, western town... Now, well, now, Fran, now, don't start knocking Zenith. I can be free enough without going back on my hometown. Well, I'm thinking of my freedom, too. In Europe, a woman of my age is just getting to where men take a serious interest in her. And I just won't be put on the shelf by my daughter when I can still dance better and longer than she can. I've got brains. Thank God I still got looks. And no one takes me for over 35 or 30 even. I'm begging you for life, Sam. No, I'm not. I'm demanding it. <laughs> I see how you feel. All right, I'll enjoy life now if it kills me, and it probably will. We've earned this trip, Sam. It's coming to both of us. You've got plenty to show for all your work. We brought up Emily and seen her married, and I've done my part, Sam. It hasn't always been easy. Well, it will be, dear, from now on. Sam, I'll love you so much more when you're not just an old horse in a treadmill. I saw you, bloody European travelers. Hello, matey. Hello, Tubby. Oh, dear. Harry Boo Frank say, Springsy Dites, got the spaghetti. Oh, stop being funny, Tubby. No, I'd let him alone, matey. He's, he's just glad to see us go. Sure. Hi, friend. All right. Let me take your things, matey. Thanks. We weren't satisfied just to come to the station with everyone else, Sam. We are going to New York with you. What? That's right. Me and the wife's going to see you off at the pier. Toot toot. All ashore. Hey, Goodbye. that's great. Isn't it great, Fran? Yes. I'll run up and close the bag. Oh, let me come along, Fran. I won't be in the way. Well, Tubby, old son of a gun, how about a cocktail? No, thanks. What's wrong with you? I think I'll stay sober until after I've given you a hunk of my mind. What have I done? You know darn well what you've done. Americans like you and me can't quit work, Sam. We're meant to keep on working till we die in harness. Tubby, I'm out to make a new life for myself. Huh. Yeah, I'm out to learn how to enjoy my leisure now I've retired. I've been doing things that people expected of me always. Oh, shut up. If you think I can see my oldest and closest friend turned into an expatriate parlor snake because Zenith isn't good enough for easy his wife. Now, easy, Tubby, easy. Ever since college, I've guessed you and looked up to you. You're pretty near everything I am not and ought to be. But you're a blamed fool when it comes to your wife. Well, you don't know what you're talking about. What are you doing, Tubby? Trying to get Sam to buy back the company? No, I wasn't. But Sam's going to regret this the end of his life. He knows it as well as I no, do. No, I don't. I don't know anything of the kind. All I know is I'm out to see some of the world I haven't seen and get a perspective on the USA. <laughs> I might get to know myself at the same time. I might even get to know my wife. Fran, did I remember to tell you today that I adore you? <laughs> Lockett. Here you are. I've been looking for you, friend. Have you? Wasn't the captain's dinner delightful? Done up quite well, I thought. Where's your husband? I left him out on deck to cool off. The fresh air won't hurt him. He thinks he sees a lighthouse or something. Sorry it's over, friend. Sorry what's over? The voyage. No, not that I've been bored. You've taken excellent care of that, Major Lockett. If it hadn't been for meeting you Britishers, though, Sam says he can't wait to set foot on British soil. Well, neither can I. Oh, but when I do set foot... You'll try your wings? That's very pretty, Major. I hope I don't fall. I've been laying out things for us to do in London. For us to do? Why not? Fran! Fran! 
Fran, it, it was land. Oh, was it, Sammy yeah, dear? Yeah, Bishop's Light, they call it. Say, if I had a motorboat, I could be ashore in half an hour. Ashore in England. I can't believe we've done it. If you keep on across the ocean in a straight line, Sammy, darling, you're bound to strike land sooner or later. I know, but England. That's the most natural part of it, Dodsworth. If it were Africa now, where England ought to be. Hey, my first sight of England isn't funny to me. Come on, Fran, come on and look at the light, huh? I'd rather dance. Coming, Major Locker? All right, you two go along, and I I I'll join you after I've calmed down. The Dodsworth? Oh, hello, Mrs. Cartwright. What was it you just called that light? I saw it, too. Bishop's light. Of course, I I I've never been across before. I, I got excited. There's nothing like a first trip to Europe. Yeah, especially when you're old enough to know what you're after. What are you after? I'm enjoying my leisure. You see, I've been doing things myself for a long time now. I, I thought I'd give things a chance to do something to me. The education of an American. Yes, you might call it that. How long have you given yourself? Six months. Oh, I, I, I'll be homesick by then. Yes. I was homesick the first year I came over. Came over? Where from? Michigan. Oh, are you an American, Mrs. Cordright? Well, I don't know what I am. I used to be a British subject by marriage. I don't know that one can be a British subject by divorce. I expect I'm just a woman who lives in Italy. Italy? Why? It's cheap. Say, what's it like? That depends on what one's after, as you'd say. Well, when a man has no more job and his wife wants a fling, there are worse things than travel. Much worse. But for a steady thing, give me America. For Americans, that is. Your wife wouldn't say that. She will by the time our six months are up. I hope she does. Drifting isn't nearly as pleasant as it looks. Say, if you don't like it, why don't you give it up? One drifts for lack of reason to do anything else. Well, uh, what do you want? What do you suppose any lone woman wants? <laughs> I guess I've been talking too much again. I'm, I'm sorry, Mrs. Cordwright. <laughs> Around your friend, Piccadilly, London. Sam, please. You know I can't get over it. Smell it, sooty. That's the coal smoke. Listen to it, Fran. New York may be noisier, but this is deeper. Sam, don't act like a tourist. Come on. All right. Here we are. Come in, Major Locker. Thanks. It was a grand evening, wasn't it? It was for me. Well, Sam. Sam, dear. I guess he's not home yet. Sit down, Clyde. It's rather late. Oh, please, Clyde. He's gone off to a stag dinner. Won't be home for hours yet. You can keep me company. I say, he isn't likely to come in roaring, is he, and shoot me when he finds me here. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> Sam has all the old-fashioned virtues except jealousy. You call it a virtue, <laughs> do you? Well, when a wife who isn't exactly plain seems to be attractive to other men and doesn't mind when they show her that they are attractive. Oh, quite. Yes, I see what you mean. Clyde, you're not being as amusing as usual tonight. I don't feel amusing. Be informing, then. I'd rather hold your hand. You don't mind? <laughs> you... You do it so beautifully, I rather like it. Friend, do me a favor. What? Don't go trekking over to the continent. You belong here, friend. I need you here. You don't mean that, and I don't want you to mean it. Friend, darling. Clyde, please. Please. There. Does that show you that I mean it? That was a very silly thing to do, Clyde. Friend. And I didn't like it. I think you'd better go. Are you trying to make me feel that you resented my kissing you? Did you think I wouldn't resent it? Sorry. I thought I was doing what was expected of me. I thought civilized people knew where an innocent flirtation stops. Will you go, please? Of course. <laughs> Fran, you have the most charming and childish misconception of yourself. <laughs> you think you're a woman of the world. You're nothing of the sort. And I'm afraid you never will be. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, hello there, Dodsworth. Uh, you folks just get in? Yes. How was the show? All right. If you like entertainment that ends badly. Good night. Good night. 
You know, he's not so bad. He's fresh, but he's not so bad. <laughs> Why, darling, what's the matter? What is it? I've never been so furious in my life. What, Lockhart? Don't you mention that Russell's name. Well, what did he do? He insulted me. Yeah, how far did he go? <laughs> when I tried to put him in his place, he said things to me. He said, see, I can't bear it. Mm -hmm. I suppose it's up to me to go out and shoot him. Don't joke, Sam. Well, I would feel rather like a fool. You know, you and I aren't up to this sort of thing. It kind of makes us look like the hicks we are. Sam! Well, it does, and it's your own fault for leading him on. So I'm to blame. He must have had some excuse for making a pass. You have been flirting with him, and you've got such a sweet way of bawling me out in front of him that he'd naturally I've conclude he could... I've never said anything could... to embarrass you. I've always been loyal to you. You'll be sorry. You'll be sorry. Oh, Fran, I'm tired. I'm tired, too. All right, then we're both tired. Sam. Well, what is it now? We never used to scrap so much at home. Well, I guess we haven't got enough else to do over here. Don't say that. It's England. England's such a strain. I want to go over to France tomorrow, Sam. But I don't. I like it here. I don't. Uh, now, I'm just beginning to get on to things in London. I've got a date to look at some aeroplane factories tomorrow. I don't care if you have. Oh, France will be so foreign. I want it to be. I want to start all over. I'm so ashamed of this locket business. And I can't stay in this country with that man laughing at me and saying... What, that you uh, kicked him out? You've got to take me away, Sam. I don't trust myself. I'm afraid of myself. Afraid, sweetheart? Yes, I am. I'm just a woolly American like you are. And if you ever catch me trying to be anything else, will you beat me? Well, will I, will I have to beat you very long at a time? Man Sunderland and Faye Bainter will continue in God's verse shortly. But now we take you into a typical Lux home on the West Coast. 16-year-old Rosalie is setting the table in the dining room, and young brother Bobby comes in. When he sees his sister, things begin to happen. Let's listen. Mother, please make Bobby stop. What's the matter now? Oh, he's being horrid. Just listen. She got runs in her stockings with holes in the toes. Awful to look upon my pretty Irish rose. <laughs> Now, Rose, you mustn't blame your brother for criticizing your stockings when you have an enormous run like that. But, Mommy, it's bad enough having runs without a boy making fun of them. Who's to blame for your having runs, my pet? Haven't I told you again and again that it pays to stick to Lux because Lux cuts down on runs? Of course, Mother's right, as mothers usually are. Lux flakes do cut down on runs because Lux is especially made to preserve the elasticity that silk has when new. Then the threads can stretch under strain and spring back without breaking. Lux has none of the harmful alkali found in many ordinary soaps, and with Lux you avoid injurious cake soap rubbing. If you are not already using Lux flakes for your stockings, make a note to buy some tomorrow. Our producer, Mr. DeMille, continues. We continue with Dudsworth, starring Walter Houston, Nan Sunderland, and Faye Bainter. <laughs> One month has passed, and the Dodsworths are in Paris. We're in their hotel suite, where they've been entertaining some of their newfound friends. On a balcony high above the city, we find Fran Dodsworth with Arnold Israel, a suavely polished citizen of the world. And what can I do to make myself a part of your Paris, Mrs. Dodsworth? Come to dine again, Arnold. No, you and your husband must come to me now. Tuesday at 8, Key Voltaire. Through the carousel and straight over the river. Oh, what a charming address. Where do you call your home, Arnold? I was born in Krakow. I grew up here. I keep my residence in New York, a flat in London, and a villa at Antibes. What an ideal existence. I believe in freedom and variety. So do I. <laughs> well, that should cement our friendship. <laughs> Madame de Penable tells me that you and she are taking a villa on Lake Geneva for the summer. Well, it hasn't been settled. Then you will not return to America with your husband in June? That hasn't been settled either. I expect to be in Geneva in August. Perhaps oh, I... Oh, you must come to see us. I mean, if we're there. I shall be delighted. Really delighted. Oh, yes, Mrs. Courtright? Everyone seems to be going. I must say good night. And so must I. It's been a charming evening, Mrs. Dodsworth. I've been happy to celebrate your birthday with you. 
Oh, I hadn't realized it was your birthday, Mrs. Dodsworth. I wish I hadn't. No woman really enjoys getting to be 35. When you're 40, as I am, you look back on 35 as a most agreeable age. I hope I look as young as you do, Mrs. Cartwright, when I'm 40. You're almost sure to, my dear. Well, I must get my coat. My dear, don't. What? You're so charming. Be sure you're right. I don't know what you're talking about. Shall we go in? (laughs) (laughs) Well, sir, then then I went in where Napoleon was crowned and I sat down. And there I was. Napoleon and Sam Dodsworth of Zenith together. Mr. Dodsworth has been telling us his impression of Paris. Oh, yes? The manufacturer of automobiles comes into contact with Gothic permanence and finds it... Ah, right. That's what I like about sightseeing. Shows you how small you are in time as well as space. Of course, Fran says it isn't the thing to do, but <laughs> I like it. What do you say, Kurt? Paris? Oh, I detest it. For me, it's a motion picture made by lunatics. <laughs> I have listened to an American automobile magnate, an Austrian travel agent, and an international banker had explained Paris to me, a Parisian. Eh bien, now I go on. Good night, my dearest Fran. Good night, Madame de Bonneau. Good night, Kurt, dear. Thanks for my sweet flowers. Call me up tomorrow. Maybe we can dance somewhere for tea. Oh, thank you. Good night. Good night, Kurt. Good night, Arnold. Good night, Mr. Dodsworth. Oh, are you going too, Mrs. Courtright? I must. I stole a bit of your letter paper to write my Italian address on. Here it is. Come and see me. Say, we'd love to, Mrs. Courtright. Please do. Good night. Good night. You like that woman, don't you? Well, you thought she was the most distinguished-looking woman on the boat. <laughs> she seems a frump in Paris. Though, you know, I'm always glad to see any of your friends, Sam, even the not particularly amusing one. Mm-hmm. I think I'll go to bed. Uh, Coming? Yeah, say, Fran. Yes? Haven't we had about enough of Paris? My dear Sam, unfasten his shoulder strap, will you, mon vieux? No, I mean, isn't it about time we thought about going back home? Home? Yeah, I don't see much percentage just sitting here on my rear end. <laughs> Got some business I want to attend to. I'd like to see how Emily's getting along with her honeymoon and... And I'd like to be in New Haven for my class reunion. Sam. Yeah? Why don't you go home? What, without you? Yes. Get yourself a new lease on life, then come back and join me. Why don't you? No, no, I I wouldn't want to go home without you, Fran. Well, I can see you aren't enjoying Paris. I'm only thinking of your pleasure. If you thought of mine, you wouldn't ask me to leave here when we're meeting such nice people. I don't think they're so nice. Well, we needn't go into that again. Well, I don't, and I don't see what you see in them. Now, this Arnold Israel may be all he says he is internationally and financially, but he certainly is no Barney Baruch. Sam. Mrs. Panabo, well, she may be all right, but I hate to think who pays the bill when that young Austrian Kurt takes you out. Arnold Israel happens to be one of the most distinguished living financiers. Yeah. René, and it is Madame de Panabo, mm-hmm. not Mrs., mm-hmm. is a true woman of the great world here. Court may be poor but he holds one of the oldest titles in Austria, and they all belong to the most amusing and exclusive crowd in Paris. Fran, do you think the real thing in Paris would hang out with a couple of hicks like us? Hicks? All right, now, what else are we? I'm just an ordinary American businessman, and I married the daughter of a Zenith brewer who seems to be flying pretty high these days. I suppose you know what you mean by that? Well, why won't you sit at a sidewalk cafe with me? Because smart people don't. I'm not smart. Now, let's have the one about the great motor magnet and all he's done for the automobile industry. Mm. You may be the most impressive man in Zenith, but you're not in Zenith now. You're in Paris now. And I'm sick and tired of apologizing to my friends. Have you been apologizing to this crowd for me? Hello? Yes? Well, I'm sorry. All right. Well, we've been making so much noise, someone's complained. (laughs) Oh, how humiliating. Yes, isn't it? All right, go ahead. Pipe down, but go ahead. I'm waiting. You are hopeless. If you had the mistiest notion of civilization here... Well, maybe I don't think so much of it, though. Maybe clean hospitals, concrete highways, and no soldiers along the Canadian border come near my idea of civilization. There are 20 million automobiles in America. I've contributed something to every one of them from my own personal civilization. And if that isn't more, the knowing how to order dinner as your friend, the madam... Don't call her the madam. All right, all right, all right. Let's not go into that again. I'm going to get out of this town and back to doing something and take you along. I'm not going, Sam. Oh, yes, you are. I think we need a vacation from each other. I don't feel that way about it. I've 
taken a villa with René de Penal in Switzerland. Well, I think you might have told me. I've got my own money. Fran. What? Fran, my darling, you're, you're not drifting away from me. I hope not. What, you and I, Fran, after 20 years? <sighs> All right, I'll give it up. I won't go home. You've got to go. I can't stand being torn this way any longer. I'm suffocating. I'm sorry for everything mean I've said, but if we're going on together, I've got to be left alone this summer. Oh, don't look so hurt, and please don't be angry. Or do be angry if it's going to make you any happier. But remember that I did make a real home for you, and I'll do it again. But you've got to let me have my fling now, because you're simply rushing at old age, Sam. And I'm not ready for that yet. What are you looking at? Shipping news. I just thought I'd see the first boat I could catch. Look at this, Sam Dodsworth's home. Sam Dodsworth's home. Said he had a class reunion. Sam Dodsworth, and she's not with him. Hmm. Why should I say anything I didn't think? You didn't think what would make me think. Well, maybe I don't care what you think. Well, you'd better care what I think. Hello, Dad. Hello, Tubby. Matey's here. We've been waiting for you. Sam. Tubby. Was it fun in New Haven? Did you have a good time? Had a wonderful terrible. time. Oh, what is this? A heat wave or just a hangover? It's Sam. Sam, yeah. I'm going home. All right, go ahead. Sit down, Tubby. I'm going home. Tubby. Anything wrong, Dad? No. Has a cable come for me today? Not yet. Well, there should have been a cable from your mother. Well, I can telephone. No, no, don't bother. If a cable had come, they'd have sent it out, wouldn't they? Well, don't be cross, Father. I'm not being cross. In the old days, I wouldn't have to ask if there was a cable. It's been laid out on my table for me. The way things are run around this house, I can't find anything of mine. Well, I know things aren't the way they used to be, but please don't be difficult. Well, why shouldn't I be difficult when a man's made to feel more homeless in his own house than he did in Paris? I'm sorry you feel that way. It's true. Only I'm not being difficult. Where's my mail? There isn't any. No mail? My mail should be laid out on that table. But, Father, if it hasn't been anywhere Your mother always out. had my mail laid out on that table. No cable, no mail. Is that the trouble, Sam? What? No cable and no mail. No. Have a cigar, Tubby? Anything, Sam? Anything? All right, where are the cigars? Why, Harry smokes cigarettes. I'll order some. No, don't bother. Never would have been like this in your mother's day. No mail, no cigars, no cable. Father, I'm sorry things aren't, aren't the way they used to be, but Harry and I are living in this house now, and I wish you'd stop speaking of Mother as though she were dead. I'm not speaking of your Mother oh, as yes, though she... Oh, yes, you are, Sam. Well, her mother's coming home. Is she? Dead? Well, she's coming any time now. I wrote her over a week ago, told her to come back. I'm just waiting for her to cable. Tell me what the boat is. Oh, Mr. Dogsworth. Yeah, what's the matter with you? Here's a cable for you. It came this afternoon. Thank heaven. Maybe you'll get a little peace and quiet around here now, Emily. What's the matter, Sam? Isn't Mother coming? No, that's nothing. This is not from your mother. Go outside, Tubby. Huh? Oh, sure. Come on, Tubby. Yeah. So long, you old horse thief. Sam, what is it? She's... She's not coming, matey. I guessed as much. What does she say? Want a few more months, Europe. Hope you're having good time home. Not one word about me going over. No, she's thoughtless. No, she's not, matey. She's scared. Scared? Of what? Of growing old. Sam, those people she's with, the ones she mentioned in her last letter, do you know them? Yeah, sure. Like them? They're all right. Who's, uh, Arnold Israel? Israel. Well, he's one of those custom-built internationals you see in the road of graveyard section every Sunday. Oh. Well, give us a kiss now. Say, will you lay off those European liberties with my wife? Oh, come on, Tubby. Hello. Uh, telegraph office. Hello, uh, Samuel Dodsworth speaking. Take a cable. Going to Mrs. Dodsworth. Same address as my last. Ready? Sailing Aquitania Wednesday. Meet me, Ritz, Paris. Love. Signed, Sam. 
And take another. Going to A.B. Heard Agency, London. Sailing, Aquitania Wednesday. Stop. Using utmost discretion, ascertain day-to-day address of Arnold Israel, Paris. Keep me informed, wireless. Signed, Dodsworth. Uh, send them both straight. Yeah, repeat them, will you? Well, Fran, this looks natural. Well, this week was as cool as anything in Paris, so I took it again. Yeah, you must be tired from your trip. How long is it from uh, Lake Geneva? Oh, I've come much further than that. I've come all the way from Biarritz. Mm, Biarritz, sir. Huh? Yes, I was alone, of course. Mm-hmm. What are you looking at, Sam? Did I remember to write you that I adore you? I well, know. I don't believe that you did. Do you? Why do you keep looking at your watch? I'm expecting a caller. At this time of night, who? At Cherbourg, I sent a man a telegram to meet me here. He's late. I'll give him ten minutes more. You're very mysterious. I've never seen you like this before. No, I've never seen you like this either, Fran. Well, if we have to stay in this stifling room, how's Emily? Everybody's very happy. and She's fine. She's going to... Uh... And I'll answer it. Wait a minute. I'll wait in the bedroom. No, no, wait. I'd rather you stay. Steady, darling. Sit down. Come in. Arnold. Good evening. Frank, I tried to reach you on the telephone to let you know I was coming. Yes, and you came from Biritz, too, didn't you? I wanted to see you two face to face. I know the whole story. I never heard anything so outrageous in my life. Suppose Arnold was in Switzerland. What if he was in Biritz? Do you know how insulting you are? You don't know how insulting I'm going to be if you don't stop this play acting. Play acting? Yeah, I know where you've been and I know who you've been with. Now, what I want to know is, are you coming home with me or staying here in Europe? Sam. You wouldn't put matters so bluntly if you understood my I understand, I understand. I'm sure that you and Kurt and Madame de Penable have given her things she wanted and never got from me. But I'm interested in what I need and want. And that happens to be peace of mind. But if you bring yourself to see matters reasonably... I've crossed the Atlantic to be reasonable. Fran, I've loved you and been married to you for 20 years. I'd like to hang on to you if I can. You want to marry each other? My dear man. No, we don't. You want to divorce me? I can tell you she doesn't. Is that true, Fran? Why should I want to divorce you? You're my husband. You couldn't very well divorce me if I weren't. You can laugh. Yes, I can do worse than that. That much having been cleared up, what have you to suggest? That Fran and I try and forget what's happened. Start out on a long hike tomorrow. The Tyrol, Italy, any place. Then sail home in October. No, Sam, no. No, not just yet. Now, then you'll divorce me or I'll divorce you. Sam. Well, I've told you where I stand. You're trying to take my youth away from me and tie me down to being an old man's wife. You've got your choice. You're trying to take my happiness away, the only romantic happiness I've ever known. Fran, please, that was unnecessary. Now, listen, I didn't call you in here to defend me. It's too ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Certainly it's ridiculous. I knew we'd all end by looking like fools. I'll go now, if you will excuse me. Sure, I'll excuse you. I hope you achieve your peace of mind. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Now, I'm going to see this thing through if I can. I'm ready to wipe the slate clean if you are. Well, when do we start? Where do we go? Wherever you like. Till we go home in October. Zenith in October. Well, you'll be wanting to go home. Emily's having a baby in October. Emily, a baby? She didn't tell me. No, she left that to me. Well, how is she? Is she well? She's fine. I must send her a cable. Think of Emily having... So, you see, we've got to behave ourselves because we'll be a couple of old grandparents in October. Grandparents. <laughs> Pause for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. KMX, the Columbia Station of Bangor. The last chapter in our story of Dodgeworth, starring Walter Houston, Nan Sunderland, and Faye Bainter, is revealed shortly. For his many contributions to the American stage, theater lovers owe a great debt of gratitude to the playwright from whom we now hear. Sidney Howard. 
Besides Dodsworth, he has given us the silver cord, the late Christopher Bean, Yellow Jack, and the Pulitzer Prize winner. They knew what they wanted. His latest play, The Ghost of Yankee Doodle, will open the fall season of the New York Theater Guild. Mr. Howard is in Hollywood writing the screen version of Gone with the Wind for David O. Selznick. He honors us with his first appearance before a microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sidney Howard. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. As the man responsible for tonight's play, Mr. Howard, what made you select Dodsworth to dramatize? Well, I want to do a job with Sinclair Lewis. Any job. You see, I'd uh, just done a screen adaptation of another book of his, Arrowsmith. And I was spending the summer in Cornish, New Hampshire, just 20 miles from where Lewis lives in Vermont. And Red suggested we turn Dodsworth into a play, and that was the end of that vacation. I've heard Sinclair Lewis has a disposition as fiery as his hair. How did you find him to work with? Well, I don't know how fiery his disposition is, but he certainly puts fire into his work. I was writing the play over in Cornish, and whenever I'd strike a snag, I'd drive over to see him. We'd sit in his lawn in front of the loveliest view in Vermont, and he'd loop his long legs around the trunk of an elm tree and roll off ideas much faster than either of us could remember them. That's the way Lewis works, and there's no swank about him either. His typewriter sits right alongside of his bed. And when he's on a novel, he starts at daybreak and keeps at it for 16 hours at a stretch. And with that, he finds time to read at least one detective story a day. You might gather from this that I have considerable affection and admiration for Lewis. Yes, but what about Dodsworth? Well, I finished up my first draft and went to New York where Lewis was reading proof on a novel. We locked ourselves up in a hotel for two days. I'd read a, I'd read a speech aloud while Lewis paced up and down. He'd turn on me and say, that's terrible. Nobody'd ever say a line like that. And I'd tell him it came right out of his book, word for word. I don't care, he'd say, now it's coming out of the play. And it was always his own speech he was hard on. You see, he wouldn't believe that what he'd written in the novel could be good in the play. It was good, though. Who deserves the credit for picking Walter Houston as Dodsworth? Well, very immodestly, that was my idea. And about the best idea I ever had in my life. And now, Mr. DeMille, let me congratulate the Lux Radio Theater on its fine treatment of plays for radio. It's a new field of writing, and these programs set an example that all air shows might well follow. I'm pleased that you've let another play of mine in on it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Howard. We'll have more plays of yours. Once again, Dodsworth, starring Walter Houston, Nan Sunderland, and Faye Bainter. October, and Fran Dodsworth and Sam are still in Europe. It's early evening as we find them standing at the window of their hotel room in Berlin, gazing into the faintly luminous darkness. Fran breaks a long silence. I love Berlin, don't you, Sam? I love you, Fran. Oh, Sam, darling, will you let me thank you for all the lovely places you've taken me? Have I won you back for my wife, Fran? Yes, Sam. By not being a tartar husband... By letting me have fun with that nice little court and not thinking I'm a hussy. By helping me to forget Arnold Israel. Sam, haven't you anything to say to me? Well, what is there to say? Well, after I've just opened up my heart to you, it's a little embarrassing for you to stand there and say nothing. It makes me feel self-conscious. Self-conscious. I guess that's my trouble, Fran. I've lost my bearings. I don't know where we're heading. I think I'll call Emily and hear how the baby got through his first day. Oh, but there isn't time. Court's coming to take us out to dinner and you're not even dressed yet. Well, court can wait. It isn't polite. And Sam, I know how thrilled you are over Emily's baby, but you mustn't tell Court. Why not? Because he thinks of me as young. And I am. I am. Fran. Come in. Hello. Hello, Court. Well, is that wife of yours ready for us, Sam? I take you to a new restaurant for dinner. A very gay restaurant where only the smartest Berliners know to go. And uh, dance after? If you can make Sam get dressed. I'm sorry I didn't feel like getting dressed, but... Well, I guess I'll let you two go without me. No, Sam. You must come with us. What fun do you think it is for me to sit up all night watching you two dance? Oh. Oh, don't speak so crossly, Sam. You should be happy to see Fran happy. Well, I didn't mean to snap. But I've just had some pretty important news from home. News? Sam. Yeah, oh, nothing that would interest you, Kurt. 
But I'd like to sit by myself and think it over. Perhaps Sam does want to be left alone tonight. But I want to go out. I want to. All right, go ahead, Kurt. You and Fran run along. I'll be all right. Come in, Court. I can't go to bed tonight. I've been having too much fun. I do not like coming in here so late. I do not think that Sam would like it. Sam's dead to the world. Don't talk loud, that's all. But, Fran, dear... Oh, if... please, Court. Let poor little Fran have her fun while she can. There isn't much time left. Uh, darling. Darling Fran. Cool. You know I love you, Fran. You know that. Have you not been happy with me here in Berlin? Oh, yes. I've been terribly happy. I've loved it. Court, you know I have. I think you could love me, Fran. I think you could. There's no good talking about that. There's nothing we can do about it, is there? No. No, you're married to Sam. I can't ask you to be my wife. Court. You want me to marry you, Court? Does that surprise you? Oh, Fran. Why are you not free? If I were free, Court. Oh, my darling. Don't. Please don't. Oh, forgive me. I'm not angry. Oh, my dear. Will you not say a more kind word, Fran? Some other time. Will you let me kiss you goodnight? Oh, Kurt. Good night, Kurt. Good night, Fran. If I were free. Is that you, Fran? Oh, hello, Fran. I, I didn't know you'd come in. I didn't know you were awake. I'm sorry if... It's pretty late. Oh, not that I mind... Uh... No. Well... Oh, Fran, wait. I've just been looking at sailings. How about it, Fran? Let's get out of this. Sam, please. Why are you always so anxious to go home? I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm taking no more chances on another Arnold Israel. Now, I know this friendship for Kurt is harmless enough, but you might get fascinated. You think I might? You really think I might? Well, I love Court, and Court loves me, and I'm going to marry him. I only decided to just now, this minute, since I found that you were listening at the door, the great Dodsworth, great prowling elephant. Fran. I'm sorry Court didn't stay to punch your head for spying I wasn't spying. You've I never didn't known anything, anything about me, not what I had on, not what I thought, not the sacrifices Look I made. Now. I'll be happy with Court. I'm fighting for my life. You can't drag me back. Fran. Come on. All right. Can you get your divorce here? What? The divorce. Oh, yes. I suppose so. I wish you'd wait for a couple of months. Why? And I'd like you to feel absolutely sure about Kurt. Well, that's my funeral now, isn't it? Yes, I guess so. I'll have to get used to that idea if I can. I guess I can. American Express office, Naples branch. Yes, senor, I will attend to it. Hello. Any mail for Dodsworth? Not a thing today, Mr. Dodsworth. Well, I guess I'll have to wait a few days. Maybe I'll get a pleasant surprise. What have you got to offer in the line of excursions? Well, we have a tourist party just starting for Herculaneum and Pompeii. I've been there. Oh, well, there's a drive around Amalfi and Sorrento. Been there, too. Hmm. Would you like Paestum, sir? What's Paestum? Greek temple, sir, in excellent preservation. Well, that's more than I am. All right, I'll take a chance. Get me a car. How many in the party, sir? One. Yes, sir. Mr. Dobbs. Hmm? Do you remember me? Mrs. Courtright, well, well, isn't this great? <laughs> Sit down if you've got a moment. Well, time is something I have nothing else but. 
How's Mrs. Dodford? She's fine, thanks. I, I haven't got her along with me this trip. She doesn't like traveling? Does anybody? Well, I don't know. I suspect most people travel to get away from themselves. Well, I've been at it two months now. I'm glad to hear why. Alone? Oh, I'm getting used to it now. I don't want to intrude or be impertinent, but... Well, I'm sorry. Well, I guess it's a pretty ordinary story. My wife's younger than I am and livelier. I oughtn't to be undressing in public like this. I never did that before, either. Will you keep on traveling now? Yes, I've, I've got to stay over and be on hand for the divorce. Where? Berlin. Berlin.